we're primarily a cow-calf uh, breeding stock operation, so those cows are eating grass. I think we average about 220 days a year that they're out on pasture grazing for grass. Um, and then we're supplementing them through the winter months with, with hay, with baled grasses. I'm Cameron Nicolation. Um, we farm here at Douglas, Manitoba. We do have most of this land here on the home farm is native pasture. Um, so we like the kids, they like to go walking out in the marsh and see the different animals and um, go spend some time in the wetlands. It's nice when the cattle are out and happy and grazing and, and the kids are out playing. It's, uh, it's pretty relaxing. Biodiversity is important because it helps maintain those ecosystem goods and services. It's really important that we have healthy soils that are going to uh, keep growing the forages that we need. It's really important that the crops that we do grow have pollinators to help them produce grain. My name is Mary Jane Orr. I am the General Manager for Manitoba Beef and Forage Initiatives. We exist as a not-for-profit research and demonstration farm. So our goal is to engage all stakeholders in beef production and in forage production and carry out on-farm evaluation of different management practices and then communicate that extension of knowledge back to all of our stakeholders. We have this mixed land use, so we're able to evaluate wooded areas, wetland areas, grassland areas and cropped areas. There's not many of these uh, upland areas around the wetlands anymore because they, if they can be drained or broken up they have been so that's why we started working with Nature Conservancy Canada because we've got uh, the yellow rail as the key one here. It's actually an endangered species that's been found in our wetlands around our farm. That's one of the key things that we've been looking at is maintaining those riparian areas and those upland grass areas during the right seasons for those birds that are nesting there. Um, trying to keep the cattle out of them at the, at the right times of year and uh, support those nesting birds as much as we can. Producers are the primary focus driving uh, what we do and how we do it. So one of the most interesting facts that a lot of people don't realize about Manitoba is that it's predominantly cow-calf production. And so what does that mean? That means that farmers are maintaining breeding herds of cows, that they may you know, raise a calf as a little female calf and keep that calf, raise her into maturity until a two-year-old, and then that cow may live on lot farm for another 10 years. But when we actually like, understand what production looks like in Manitoba, it's happening across a landscape where those cows are filling um, a role in the ecosystem to actually graze and use land that needs a grazer on it. The fact that there is grasslands being maintained for cattle to graze is a benefit for birds and pollinators and all types of insects that are beneficial for maintaining a healthy ecosystem. Cattle are the environment. They're replacing bison in lots of cases, but they are part of the environment. They're part of the ecology of, the, of our ecosystems. Um, having them out there grazing on those grasslands maintains the health of those grasslands. I think it's a false narrative that, that cattle are bad for the environment. I just think they are part of the environment. So the Cows and Bees project is really exciting because it showcases that improved pasture create habitat for bird species, but can also improve maybe a marginal pasture that doesn't have as much grass growing as maybe we want. Um, can we seed into it and have more desirable forage species for cows, but then also have more desirable flowering species that a lot of pollinators can keep their food supply going all year round. And so one thing I learned um, that just the diversity of native bees that we have. You know, when you hear bees, you automatically hear honeybees that live in hives that produce the honey we eat from the store. But there's a massive diversity of different um, wild bees, native bees that you know burrow in the ground or live on their own that create, uh, that need food, that need flowers as well all year round. We were able to carry out a bird survey. And so that was done where you know, you have a trained professional that can identify birds on sight and by on sound. Walked over 1,400 acres at you know strategic points and stop and listen, and they identified species at risk at both farms. And what's crazy is that the pasture is within the city limits of Brandon, and so it's right on the North Hill of Brandon. And so because it's still maintained as a perennial landscape. It's still maintaining that habitat that we're using for research, but we found three different species at risk 
within the city limits of Brandon because that perennial landscape, those grasslands are being maintained because we have cows to graze them. The one part I really enjoy is when producers don't even realize what amazing conservationists they are. So a lot of producers do what they're doing because it makes production sense. But then when you end up having a conversation or you visit their farm, you realize these beautiful landscapes, reservoirs of intact native prairie that would never have been conserved if there wasn't a cattle producer that needed to graze cows. It's important to us because we're able to utilize these marginal areas, turn them into highly productive beef protein to be able to market to the consumers while working with conservation and helping produce better habitat at the end of the day.